Hey, I'm James Burnham, and thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about the issues that you'll be facing if you have low self-worth. What are they? How do we recognize them if we have them? Self-worth issues keep us from acting on what we truly desire because we don't believe we have the right to chase what we truly want. So here's some signs to watch for. I'll give you those, and then I'm gonna give you a story of my own struggle with this. So number one, are you a people pleaser? That's a sign of low self-worth. Do you feel needy? or unworthy to enter certain spaces or to join certain people because you're not good enough? Do you struggle to build healthy relationships because once things start to get close, you feel like you're not enough to be with that person? Number four, do you have a poor self-image? Is your image of yourself something that when I used to think about who I was, I actually used to shiver with disgust at myself? It's tragic, right? Number five, you struggle with negative self-talk. How do you speak to yourself when things go wrong? Are you berating yourself? Is that something that you do? You put yourself down? Look at that. Number six, do you compare yourself to others? Are you constantly in a state where you're thinking, oh, but I'm not as good as them, or I'm better than you are, right? If you're in that space, you are struggling with self-worth. Number seven, do you experience self-doubt? Do you constantly feel overwhelmed with your inability to trust your capabilities to perform or do whatever it is in the space that you move? That's a sign to look for. And number eight, do you avoid self-expression? Do you keep yourself silent when you have something to say because you're just not thinking that you have enough value to pitch in or jump in or have an opinion that would matter to anybody? These are things that if you have in your life, you should consider looking into your own sense of self-worth and building it. And here's how to start the shift. I struggled with low self-worth for years. I was, um, I was a child, I, a, a product of child abuse. I was um, from the age of four to eight, really, really in a difficult situation. And it was something that I didn't deal with for years, but it had a huge impact on how I felt and saw myself and I walked around just thinking I was worth nothing. I struggled with suicide into my 40s. And suicidal ideation was an issue for me daily. And I just went through life just trying to be accepted and be friendly and have people like me and do whatever I needed to do to win in that moment. But the weight of my lack of self-worth on me made all these little things add up right? A negative word would crush me. A feeling like, oh, I'm not accepted would make me feel embarrassed and like I couldn't go back and be friends with those people. A any little thing could set me off. I was super vigilant in watching my acceptance in the room whenever I was around people. I'd look and see their eyes and watch to see, do they accept me or reject me? It was a struggle. And I came along this concept after I started the practice of self-compassion. I read a book by Kristen Neff called Self-Compassion. And in it, she talked specifically about the negative words that we speak about and your self-worth being so important. Not your self-esteem, which we go after, but your self-worth. You can have a high self-worth and a low self-esteem. Your self-worth is unassailable because you know to your core because you're human, living and breathing, you have infinite worth. Full stop. It is not about what you do. It is not about what you produce. It is not about the things that you have accrued in life or how you look. Any of that. You have value because you are you. And that's all it is. And when you can get to that space, things change for you. And one of the things that has helped me the most is actually moving in the mountains. I, I love to go up into the mountains and I take my personal issues with me and I look to nature to find answers. And as I have run in the mountains and looked about me through all the seasons that I'm in here in Utah, winter, spring, summer, and fall, winter, spring, summer, fall, <laughs> I have learned to look at a mountain as me. And when I run up that mountain, I see trees that are growing and beautiful. I see trees that have snapped and broken. I see new growth in the underbrush and I see old dead things lying there and rotting and decaying. 
and all of it is beautiful. The mountain just stands there exposed to everything. The weather may change. Seasons will change. The people and the animals on it will change. The trees come and go. All kinds of things happen. And the mountain is aware of it. But the mountain is the mountain and it does not change the value or anything about the mountain. These are just trappings sitting upon it that we see and we witness and we enjoy. And you are like the mountain. Your life will be full of successes and failures. It'll be full of financial joy and financial struggle. It'll be full of academic joy. So whatever it is, right? It's full of as much diversity as you see on a mountain. That is your life. But if you can begin to look at all of the comings and goings as the, just the general struggle of life, which is actually the joy of life, it is that up and down that makes it worthwhile and fun. If you begin to look at that and say, I'm the mountain and all of this around me is just the stuff upon me and it's what brings beauty and nuance and variety to my life, but it does not touch my worth. It does not. So whether you are the Dalai Lama, the Pope, the, I don't know, the greatest peace leader of the world, or a heroin addict lying in a ditch in your own vomit, you have infinite worth. And if you have a, a breath in you, if you have the ability to breathe, you have the worth to get going and accept that you are the mountain and whatever that is around you is just part of the journey and adds to the palette of your beauty. That is how I like to look at it. And when I can hold to that, I can look at some of the worst things that I have done and not be affected and feel like I am diminished. And I can look at some of the best things I have done and not be affected and puff myself up. I stand, as Brene Brown says, on my sacred ground, and I know that the whole of all of this is what makes my life beautiful, but it does not touch the worth of this mountain, nor should it touch the worth of you. You are beyond this. Your worth is unassailable, as a mountain is unassailed by the weather. It stands in whatever it is with acceptance and unchanged. That's how you should look at your self-worth. Hope this helps you. I know it's helped me. And I hope that you can feel the self-worth that you need to move into a space where you can be authentic and stand on your sacred ground. So, watch for these signs in your life if you are struggling with self-worth. One, are you a people pleaser? Do you feel needy or unworthy in the situations you're in? Are you struggling to build healthy relationships? Do you have a poor self-image? Do you struggle with negative self-talk, berating yourself? Do you compare yourself to others, whether that be to be better or worse than them? Do you experience self-doubt? Do you avoid self-expression? If these things are evident in your life, well, they are in mine. You're like me. We got work to do. Let's get at it. We're the mountain. Thanks for joining me. I got another video coming up, how to feel worthy of love. So if you're struggling with self-worth and you've identified it through this, maybe check this out. It can help you get on your way. Like, subscribe, follow. I'm James Burnham. Thanks for joining me.